Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe XD Masterclass. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe. Hope you're all doing well on this Friday afternoon. Hope you're all enjoying the month of May. Can you believe we're already in May? Crazy. If you are tuning live here on Behance today, let me know in the chat who you are and where you're tuning in from. We've got Wade and Strufi and Andres and Robert, Misty, Nabil, Mah Mahmoud, Cornell, Drew, Julia, who just wrapped up the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Always great stuff. Phil and Steve and Cody, great to see all of you. Thank you, Wade, for posting my Twitter. I'm gonna hop over there in just a second, but we're about to dive into Masterclass number 93, almost at 100, seven away from 100. Exciting stuff. All right, hopping over to Twitter for a moment. You may have seen last May 5th, when was it? That was yesterday. I don't know time anymore. Time is weird, but <laughs> May 5th, yesterday, I posted a preview of what we're going to be. I think the reason I got messed up is because last week, we, I think we discussed designing a social network. That's probably what it was. I'm going to just run with it. Even if it's not true, I'm going to run with it. But yesterday I posted a preview of what we're going to be designing today. We're going to be designing a social network, at least the home screen of a social network. It's going to be very much like either Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, Reddit. It's going to be a kind of a combination of all of it. You know, we all design experiences like this, whether it's for a social network or something completely different. Hopefully you learn something throughout this class. And of course, if anyone has questions, definitely let me know in the chat. And Misty is asking, will we have a special 100th episode? Probably. I just don't know what yet. If you have suggestions, throw it at me on Twitter. I'm thinking what it, it could be kind of fun. We've done this before. Just let all of you kind of guide what we design. I'm gonna, I could show up to the episode completely unprepared which is kind of nice. Don't have to worry about preparing for the week. And then all of you will kind of guide me through the process of what we're going to be designing, the topic, the images, the inspiration, the typefaces, except Comic Sans. Or maybe it will, maybe it'll be all Comic Sans that episode. I don't know. Hey, Bruno, first live with Howard. Thank you, Bruno. Appreciate it. Give Bruno some little clapping emojis or avocado emojis or something in the chat. Thanks for joining, Bruno. If anyone else is tuning in for the first time, let me know. All right, so we're gonna design something similar to this, and we're gonna call it, of course, Boop Book. Anyone is new, Boop is a thing. I don't have the um, the shortcut set up for the Boop um, animation, but you'll learn <laughs> Boop is a thing. All right, let's go ahead and hop over to Adobe XD. Actually, before I do that, a lot of, I get a lot of questions about inspiration and how do you start a project? Because it's often difficult to dive into an application choose an artboard, and in this case, we're gonna be designing for mobile. So I'll just go ahead and choose, you know, an iPhone 13 Pro artboard, right? It's very difficult to just dive into a document and just design, right? Of course, you can start blocking things out and there's a lot of different things you can do, but a lot of people ask me about where do you get inspiration? How do you decide on colors, typefaces, this, that, and the other thing, right? Wade's putting uh, clapping and avocados, Missy putting clapping and uh, Eric, awesome. So often what I'll typically do to start is I'll go to a, a website like Behance or Dribble or there's a million other places, right? And I'll just really start dialing down what I want to design. And in this case, I know it's gonna be a social platform, but sometimes you just have no idea. You wanna design something completely random. So in the Discover tab on Behance, you can really start dialing down what you want to design, whether it's, you know, graphic design, photography, illustration. Over here, there's a UI and UX section, right? So you can just browse some of this work. And you can also, there's some categories at the top, AR, VR, which is huge these days, 3D art, 3D motion. You know, I'm in the wrong category, obviously, but in UI and UX, icon design or UI and UX, right? And you can really start to maybe get some inspiration of what you want to design. And then when you kind of fall in that category, you can look up something like social media, right? So we have here some posts about social media. These ones are basically just everything, but you can narrow it down by creative field. Again, UI and UX in this case. And you can really start to pick and choose what you want to design, right? 
And it doesn't have to be, you know, the, the point isn't to go into a project like this and please disregard the messages and notifications Howard sure does. Oh, ouch. So Wade is referring to this up here. Look at that. And that's just, it, it just stops at 99, at least in terms of the badge. I was actually at dinner with somebody who was like, dude, I sent you a message on Behance. You didn't respond to me. And I opened up the notifications on my phone and it was like 40,000 notifications or something. Like, I don't, I know I should. I get some weird stuff in my notifications. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, Wade, for that shade, as Phil said. So anyway, the point isn't to go into a project like this and say, you know what, I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to change some colors. Now, if you're designing and you're, ju you're just starting out and you want to kind of figure out how to design and you're just doing it to learn, then sure, do something like that. But if you're actually working on a project, the point of inspiration and mood boards is to go to, let's say this one over here, right? You go to one project and you say, you know what, I really like Let's see if I can find something. This is a big, this is a very in-depth project. So let's say, you know, I really like the, the navigation bar at the bottom of this. So you might take a screenshot or take this image, pop it on your canvas. And you might go to maybe this one over here. And you might figure, you know what? I really like the way the, the feed is kind of laid out. I'm going to put that one on my canvas. And you might go to maybe this one over here. You'll find something else. Maybe you like the, the typeface. I mean, in this case, it's a pretty basic typeface, but assuming that it's a really stylized and interesting display typeface, you might go there and bring that onto your canvas. And then you start kind of piecing things together and the story starts to form, right? And you end up coming up with something unique and different, even though you've taken inspiration from, you know, a dozen or so uh, designs. And you, as a beginner designer, you might think, that's kind of copying or stealing. It's not because if you look at any project that any design team, even the best design teams in the world have done, it all starts with inspiration. And, you know, some may only look at one or two things. Some may look at hundreds, but it all happens, right? Whether it's consciously or subconsciously. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and hop over to Adobe XD. And one day we'll do a much longer stream where we go through that entire process from start to finish, and maybe that'll be on the 100th stream. I don't know. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start laying things out for our boop book. And we wanna start at the very top, and it's going to be the title of this application, which again is called boop book. Now, I'm gonna start with some guides, whether you use a grid system or guides, completely up to you and your team. But I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna start with a guide about 16 pixels from the left. I think I moved it. Yep, 16 pixels from the left and the right. I'm also going to throw a guide down from the top. And the reason I'm doing this is because on many modern day phones, especially the iPhones, we have the lovely notch, which is somewhere around 40 pixels from the top. So you want to make sure that nothing is up there because you have the time, you have your Wi-Fi and your battery indicator over on the right. And then you have that lovely notch, which is somewhere right about here. So you want to make sure you don't put anything up there that's going to be interacted with or needs to be seen by a user because they're just not gonna be able to do anything, right? All right, so we have our guides and we wanna start with, again, the title. So I can start boop book, right? There we go. Now, when you're laying things out initially, if you, if you had more time than I have right now in this hour long stream, you would probably keep it very simple. You would maybe put, you know, a very basic title over there. Maybe you would put some circles or some icons over here and then maybe you're going to have some stories because we all love stories right you put that over here maybe you'll round up the corners maybe depends on how fancy you get with your low fidelity work and you'll do something like this whether it's in groups or whatever it might be that's often how you would kind of start figuring out the user experience sometimes you would even just grab a pencil and a i was gonna say pencil on a pen i mean maybe but pencil on paper and sketch things out Sometimes that helps for some people. Me, doesn't completely help, but uh, for some people it does. So definitely do what works best for you. But I'm gonna dive kind of straighter into the high fidelity work, and we're gonna start choosing typefaces, we're gonna start choosing colors, and um, we're gonna have some fun with this. So, hoop book, we have the title, right? Now, in terms of the typeface, Helvetica is not bad. It's not terrible. I know we, we kind of move away from Helvetica these days. Not bad. 
And I think they also have another um, family or font in that family. I think it's uh, Helvetica Now, I believe it is. Someone will correct me. Someone will definitely correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. Um, but I want to get a little bit stylistic with this, but not too stylistic. So we're going to go with Astoria, right? And this is a typeface found on Adobe Fonts. I believe I used it last week as well. So there's Astoria, right? And we ha and they also have Astoria and Astoria Sans as well, which is great. And what's nice about this one is it has just a little bit of a style to it. And the fact that it also has a Sans version, right? So if I switch this over, when we drop the size of these text layers and you know if this that very slight stylistic whatever you want to call it is um a little bit too distracting then you can always you know switch over to astoria sans so we're gonna go with that and for the title we might want to either bold it or extra bold it we'll definitely see i'm gonna bump this up just a little bit to about there right all right Helvetica. So yeah, Matt's pointing out Hel Helvetica new, but there also there's another one I believe, um, right? Because Hel Helvetica new is, oops. Yeah, I have Hel uh, I have Helvetica and Helvetica new, but I believe there's another one that came out within the last year or two. Um, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I'm dreaming about it. Maybe I just want a new Helvetica. I don't know. Maybe it's a weird thing that designers do. But I thought there was. Maybe Wade will Google it. And then he'll I'll realize that I'm completely wrong. All right, so we have our header. And I want to choose a color. Now, often on social networks, we see a lot of blue. And I think we're going to stick in that range. Facebook's blue. Twitter's blue. Behance's blue. Um, uh, what, else? what other social networks are blue? I don't know. <laughs> Wade says he's trying. He's probably coming up with nothing. Because I'm probably out of my mind. All right, so we're going to stick with blue. But we're going to bring in a little bit of purple, just a, almost like a blurple, right? Just to kind of move it away from the rest. Just like that, right? And as I'm adding these colors, I'm definitely going to want to hop into my document assets and just add them in there. Boop. I can also add the character style as well. I'm going to name this header or maybe logo. And this is going to be the primary. And what's nice about adding these colors and character styles to your document assets is once we start using this blue throughout the application, which we're definitely going to do, you know, not too much, but it's going to be there, tasteful. We can very easily right click, press edit, and then make those changes, which is great. All right. So we've got our boot book. I'm going to take a quick peek. It might be a little bit too uh, close to the top. I might bump it down just a touch. Now, you might be asking or thinking, Helvetica Now. Okay, I wasn't going crazy. Helvetica Now. It's an actual thing. All right. Very good. Someone, uh, I saw some uh, questions. Let's see. Oh, so Nabil is actually telling me which uh, typefaces I used last week. Because I clearly am out of my mind still and I forgot. House of Cards, New, or New Order. That was the one that I was thinking of. Also a very simple typeface, but with a little bit of something to it. And then Martin, you want to be mindful of font size when designing for 8 pixel grid. Sometimes, it, I mean, font sizes have a little bit more fluidity because, um, you know, sometimes you just need them a little bit larger. And if you go, because eight pixel grid, you know, eight and then 16, it's a big difference, right? So sometimes if you go from eight to 16, it just might be too large. So you might want to, and also, you know, on the web, a lot of it's percentage based now, based on, you know, responsive re uh, responsiveness and your screen size and all that sort of thing. But um, it depends. A lot of developers and designers try to stay with, within that. But yeah, try to be mindful of that. But it, it, for type, it's not too bad. Now, you might be asking or wondering, this is very close to the left-hand side. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this as I am going through this process. But the, the basic point of this is, if you're on a social network, again, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it might be, you're going to notice this because the applications want as much room for the content, the feed, the images, the videos as possible. So you're going to notice very thin margins and padding on the side in many cases for applications like this. And hopefully it'll kind of make sense as we go. All right. 
So now over to the right hand side, we're going to want some basic icons, things like a notification bell, a messages icon and search. And this also brings up a discussion that you're going to definitely have to have with your team is do you want these, you know, these elements at the top right hand corner, or do you want them on the navigation bar at the bottom, right? It all depends on what you have at the, on the navigation bar. Are you going to have a place to go to videos and the feed and the home and profile? So if, if you're you know cramming your navigation bar, you may want to throw some of that stuff at the top right hand corner instead. So let's add a few things up here just for now. I'm going to hop over to Nucleo, which I use quite often on these streams, and we'll type out something like. Let's go to actually let's go to this library here. And I will show you an alternative in just a moment. So I'm going to copy this icon, pop it in here, and I might want a messages or a chat possibly. Let's grab this one. I'm going to copy and paste that in there as well. And then possibly search. Now, if you don't have icons at your disposal, what you can do is you can hop down to the bottom left-hand corner of XD. This is your plugins, Super Ellipse. We're going to be using that in just a moment. But you can search for the icons for design plugin. And then you can type out basically anything that you're looking for. Chat, for example, or message or search, right? There's thousands upon thousands of open source icons that you can use freely in your projects, which is wonderful. So again, if you don't have icons at your disposal, definitely hop over there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I think 24 is a pretty decent size for these icons. So I think I might leave them as is. But definitely as you're designing, pop open that preview, command and control, return, or the play button at the top right hand corner. I think that could work. Definitely be mindful of border width if you're designing using stroke based icons. These, some of them are actually, these ones in particular are not, these are fill based icons, but you know, many of them that you'll find in the icons for design plugin are border based. So you'll be able to adjust those borders very easily or, you know, for fill based icons, in many cases you can dive in, select the object and just basically add a border the same color as the fill just to thicken it up a little bit. I think this could be, oops, I think this could be okay. But again, be mindful of your border based icons. I'm going to make sure that these are all looking pretty good. And I may just to give a little bit of an example, I may want to add a, a badge. Maybe there, there might be nothing in the badge. But what I might want to do is just, you know, draw out a badge with a circle. Maybe I will apply our primary color. And then for the border, because in this case, it's not too bad, but sometimes you might want a little bit of a cutout on your icon. And just, just to separate the badge from that icon itself. So I'm gonna just add a border that's the background color. Now, speaking of the background color, right now it's set to pure white, probably fine, but sometimes you just might wanna add a little bit of color in there. like. That is a very little bit of color. You probably don't want to go something like this unless you're really getting stylistic and your media cards are going to be opaque. You know, have a white background, for example. You don't want to go too crazy with your background colors because then it makes adding content, especially text on top of it, a little bit more difficult. So I just add a little bit of blue in there. Most people will probably look at this like, oh, it's white, whatever. And, you know, they're not wrong. Um, I'll just sample this Oops. for the border. Boop. And now we have a little bit of a separation. Maybe I'll just bump that to two and we have a little bit of a badge. Now, ideally inside of the badge, there might be a, a number like one message, two message, whatever it might be. Right. But in this case, we're keeping it simple and we're going to run with that. All right. I'm going to group or what I can do is I can just place this ellipse inside of this folder. I'm going to group all three of these elements and I'll just call this actions at the top. And what I can also do if I think I would need to rearrange these icons, I can turn a stack on within the properties inspector, right? Now, now the badge is kind of throwing off the spacing in between these particular elements, but this will allow me to just jump in and rearrange them as necessary, right? <laughs> Eric. 
or 99 plus. I'm never going to live that down. Thanks, Wade. There it is. 99 plus, right? And there's a reason it probably stops at 99 because they don't want to put 40,000 up there. I guess I could put 40K, but then that would just make me look even worse, right? Thank you, Behance team. I'm sure they did that on purpose. Just for me. All right. I'm going to move this down so it lines up. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do, right below this information, we're going to put the stories. Now, in on some applications, right below that header bar, they have the ability to compose a message. You know, what's on your mind? Tell us about your day or whatever it might be. I'm going to kind of mold this one to be very similar to Twitter, where that's kind of out of the way. On Twitter, on the actual official mobile application, at the bottom right-hand corner, they have a floating action button. So you can press that or you can hold it to get more actions, but you can press it and then you'll be able to compose a message. I kind of like that. It's out of the way. It's not taking up room for the feed. So it works. Now, in terms of the stories, there are a few elements that we're going to be designing for story. Now, the first thing is we're going to be designing the actual container where we're going to be putting happy little faces in there, right? Now, I posted on, I posted yesterday a little bit of a joke that some people will try to convince you that squircles, which is a super ellipse, are basically you know, round erecting. They're not completely wrong, but they're wrong, right? <laughs> Here's a rounded rectangle. But I want something a little bit more stylistic for this application. So I want to create a squircle or a super ellipse, which is kind of, you know, if a rectangle and a circle had a child, it would be that, right? So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool, draw one out. Now there's no native way in XD to create a squircle, but there is a plugin and it is called Super Ellipse. You can search that within your plugins and this only works with an ellipse. So if you have a rectangle selected, as you can see, it's not going to work. Select an ellipse and then you can increase the transform value, which will convert it into a squircle, right? So you can see it's slightly different. It's about the same value here. It's similar but it's slightly different. So we'll do something like this, right? Delete this ugly re rounded rectangle. <laughs> um, so we've got our squircle. We, this is where we're gonna put our lovely faces, right? So this might be maybe about 64, <laughs> something like that. And then we want around it, we want the story indicator. You know, if you go on Instagram, for example, they have different colors based on the status of a story. They might have a gradient for an active story that you haven't seen yet. They might have gray for a story that you have seen. Then they might have a different color for your stories. They might have a different color for friends stories. A lot of different things, right? Eric says it's fancier. I agree. It's a, it's a fancier rounded rectangle. So I'm going to duplicate this make it a little bit larger. Let me change the color just for a moment. Actually, we can probably run with the gray one right now and move it behind. And we'll just make it a little bit larger, probably around 70, something like that. It's a bit, something like that, right? Perfect. All right, so we have our first story. And this is a very basic one. But what we want to do is we want to add a photo in here. We also want to add a name at the bottom. So starting with the name, we'll just start with our, we'll start with us, right? And it might say you. And we'll drop this down to about maybe 14. And this kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier about sticking with the eight pixel grid for type, right? We have eight and we have 16. So eight, very small. 16, possibly a little bit too large. So you just might want to drop it down just a little bit and that's completely fine, right? And I might want to drop the weight a little bit as well, just so it's not too bold. And then this is where we'll probably want to break with our primary color, which right now is blue. But we want to go something a little bit more simple and we'll go right about here, right? And it's not black, nothing wrong with a pure black color, but sometimes just adding a little bit of blue in there or you know, usually whatever your primary color is, adding a little bit of that color in there We'll just kind of soften it out a little bit. Obviously, you don't want to go too much, right? You want to do something like this because then accessibility becomes a problem. So you want to find that nice balance. And in this case, I think it's right around there, which I'm also going to boop, add to my colors and my character styles. 
story. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stories slash name. No, no, I can't do that. Stories, name. I was going to put it into a group, but that's for components, right? But I could do new group stories. There we go. All right. So we have that looking pretty good. Now, considering we're going to have different variations of our stories experience, what we might want to do is turn this into a component. So I'm going to hop over to, actually, I'm going to put people in there afterward. So I'm going to grab all these elements, command and control K to turn it into a component. And we're going to just type out story. Now this is going to be our default view, which is basically a, a, a red story. But now what we want to do is we want to start designing the additional version. So over within our uh, properties inspector, I'm going to add a new state. And it's going to be called maybe unread, even though it's not really read, it's unviewed. Maybe it's unviewed. That could be work. Is that even a word? I don't know. It is now. Unview. And in the background, we're going to add a little bit of a gradient instead of a simple gray. So we might want to do maybe, I'm not going to do red up there and I'll show you why in a moment, but we might want to do something like this where it's kind of, you know, purplish pink, something like that, right? Now, obviously it looks a little bit strange with the blue, but we'll deal with that in just a moment. And then we might want, let's see, what other ones do we want back here? Maybe you. So this will probably just be maybe this blue or this blurple, right? And then we might also want a live version. So maybe we'll do a gradient on that one as well. And this is why I kind of stayed away from the red because there might be a world where your friends might be live. And this might be red at the top and then more of pink down here. And then for some of these, there may be additional elements like a live badge. Now, we'll probably get to that if we have some time. I do want to make sure we get to as much of the feed as possible. But we've gone through and added a few different states for our various stories, right? And some of them, especially the U version, might have a way to you know, a, a call to action to add something to it. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. But let's go ahead and hop over to Finder and let's add a photo in here. Boop. Right, there we go. Now this one I did override. That's why the photo is not appearing there, but I can just dive in here and copy it and pop that in there. All right. So again, like I mentioned, some of them might have different badges. Now this one might have a plus button so that we can actually add content to it. So what I wanna do, I wanna kinda of stick with that squircle. So I might just duplicate this. Let's sample our blue. Sample this, maybe make it a little bit thicker. Might be a bit too big. Again, pop open that preview once in a while just to kinda of take a peek and then Make sure it's in the middle. Eh. Oops. I'm going to pop open the grid and just very simply grab my pen tool or a line tool, of course. And this will just help me make a plus button, right? Duplicate, rotate 90 degrees, and there we go. I'm going to make sure all of this is centered. That was the wrong way. It's always fun trying to center these things. That's a bit better. Actually, I can right click and align to the pixel grid. And that looks much better. There we go. Group, call this add, and just make sure that this is somewhere in this area here. I can kind of overlay it. Yeah. Maybe I can put it in the center. No. I think I'll put it down. That'll work. All right. How did you go to the preview so fast? So command or control and return should launch the preview. Does it show it if I hover over? It does not. What about in here? Does it show it? Preview. Ah, there we go. There's the shortcut. So under the view uh, window menu, if you go down to preview, it'll show you the shortcut right over here. On the Mac, it's, it's command and then return. That'll launch the all right, 
So we've gone ahead and created our first story. Now, of course, we want to make sure that we have additional stories in place for, you know, our various friends. Let me just see. I'm going to move this down a little bit. All right. So what we want to do is we want to add a few additional ones going across this artboard. A lot of different ways we can do that. Repeat grids is definitely one of them, but because we're going to have so many different variations, we probably want to stay away from using repeat grids since we can apply those states to all the different cells, right? So I'm going to place this into a group, Command and Control G, all the stories, and then over within the Properties Inspector, I'm going to turn a stack on. I'm going to define it as a horizontal stack because there's only one element inside of it. If there were multiple elements in either direction, it would define it based on the layout and orientation. Now I can dive in here and duplicate and duplicate. I'll just keep duplicating. We'll do about, I think five is okay. And then I can either hover in between these elements and pull one at a time or hold down my shift key and increase them all at once. Or with the group selected over within the properties inspector, I can adjust like this, right? So I can enter something like 16 or maybe a little bit more, 24. Something like that, right? Of course, play it by ear, see how things are looking. Then I can dive in and start making some changes. So this might be unviewed, and this might be unviewed. Maybe this is gonna be viewed, default state. You know what, maybe this one might be, maybe this one's gonna be live. There we go, so we have a nice combination of some of these. And then of course I can dive in. Now, now keep in mind that this one is still the main component, right? So you may consider just deleting the main component completely if you want to make sure you don't override anything. That way you can always go back to the main component, edit it, and then push those changes. So I'm going to delete that one and just have instances in here. And then I can hop over to Finder again. Let's find some images. We've got some lovely people over here. Let's, let's find some people and just drag them on in. Um, boop. Make that a little larger. And then, that's more people. And we'll find one more. Let's find something a bit stylist. That one. There we go. All right, let's dive in and make some changes to the names. I'm gonna just grab some names from the chat. We've got Jan or Jan, and then we've got Kevin, Stroofy, and then Umicorn. Perfect. All right. Stories are looking pretty good. Not too bad. There might be a few changes that we might want to make. And if we do want to make changes to all of them, we're definitely going to want to edit the main component. Now, one thing I'm looking at here is depending on the profile picture, which the designer of the application really can't do much about, everyone's gonna have a different profile picture, but depending on the color, it may blend in a little bit too much. So what we might wanna do is add a slight border around the profile picture. So again, you wanna make sure to edit the main component. So right click, edit main component, there it is. And you also wanna make sure to edit the default state, right? So I can dive in here, whoops, select that, add a border, maybe we'll just add a white border or this color of our background, right? And that way it adds that border to all of our profile pictures. To, uh, you know, doesn't matter which state it's on, as long as we edit the default state of the main component, it automatically adds it everywhere, which is great. All right, looking good. But of course, if we launch the preview, We've got our stories kind of extending off the artboard, but we can't really do anything with it. We can't scroll, we can't see what's else, what else is over there. Nothing really works, right? I'm gonna bring this back a little bit. So what we wanna do is create a scroll group. So I have my stories group selected and then over within the properties inspector, I am going to create a scroll group. We can do it horizontally, vertically, or in both directions. In this case, we want horizontally. And we want to make sure to set our scroll group bound. So we have the one whoops, on the right-hand side snapped to the artboard and the one on the left snapped to the group. 
In this case, we actually want it to extend all the way to the left-hand side. In this way, I can now scroll. But you're noticing that it kind of stops right at the edge. And what I can do to work around this is simply select the stories group that's inside the scroll group and then add a little bit of padding. Now, in this case, I only want the padding on the right hand side. So I'm going to switch over to this option here to see all the values. And then we have our top, we have our right, bottom and then left. So in this case, we want right and we'll do about maybe 24 pixels just to add a little bit of padding over there. And now we can scroll. We have just a little bit of room over there. So no matter how many we have, I can just keep duplicating these, right? I can just keep scrolling. I can click and drag or use the scroll wheel on my mouse or trackpad, right? And we have our nice stories experience. All right. So stories are looking pretty good. Perfect. Now, down below, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create the feed. And this could contain photos, videos, text, potentially other things. I'm not quite sure. But we're going to start with our profile picture, username, name, and then the actual text. All right, so we're going to grab our, because we want to stick with that, basically our uh, squircle. I'm going to just grab one of these, copy, paste it. And this we probably want to be a little bit smaller. Usually the profile pictures on the feed are quite a bit smaller. We probably don't need the border in this case. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Somewhere around, you know, 32, 34 in that, oops, 24 might be too small. That looks pretty good. And then beside this, we're going to want our name, username, potentially a verified badge, and maybe time at this, which was posted, or how long ago was posted, right? So we're going to do something like, uh, I'm going to grab another name from the chat, Sandy. Weinberger. There we go. And we're going to left align it. I'm going to grab this darker color. Perfect. And we'll probably stick with 14. Looks pretty good. I think for the name, we're going to probably bump it up to bold. And we're also going to want to change the photo. There we go. And then we want our um, username over to the right. Now, one thing that we're going to run into, and I'm sure a lot of you run into this as well, you might duplicate this over, right? You might change this to at Sandy, for example. And you might also have another element over here, which might be, you know, two minutes ago, right? And then you want to create another, uh, another feed, right? Or another uh, block in your feed. And you want to go to update. So you'll, you know, jump in here, type it Howard, right? Then you got to move things back over, move this over. Definitely don't want to deal with that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to, we'll stick with all this, but we're going to select all of this information. We actually select all of this. We can place it into a group, call this user, and then we're going to turn another stack on. This is going to allow us to define the spacing in between each. Now, because we might want the spacing in between the photo, and the text to be a little bit different than the rest, we're gonna probably leave it as is, but we're gonna dive in here, and this might be maybe six and six. But now if we dive in and make some changes, it's gonna automatically resize, which is wonderful, right? All right, we can also very easily, you know, create some additional elements, and it's gonna automatically resize things for us. So might, we might want maybe a little dot. Something like that, right? That could work. Or we might want a verified badge. Maybe Sandy's verified, right? So we're going to grab the polygon tool. We're going to draw one out. There we go. And then over in the properties inspector, we can enter for the side something like eight. And then we might want to maybe round out the corners of this polygon just a little bit to about two. And then we want to bring down the star radius, maybe to about 80. And then for the color, we could, of course, use our the color we've been using, which isn't terrible. I mean, it could potentially work, 
or we can you know brighten it up a little bit to kind of match some other verified badges. And on the inside, we definitely want a check mark. Now, if I were to simply grab my pen tool and start drawing out a check mark, you're gonna notice what's gonna happen, right? Because we're inside of that group, which has a stack enabled, it automatically placed it over to the side. So it's doing what it should be doing, but it's not doing what we want it to be doing in this case. So I wanna make sure I have the badge selected. I'm gonna place it into a group. And I wanna be inside of the group and then create my check mark. Now, of course, you can also use an icon for a check mark, but it's easy enough to just draw one out. There we go, that could work. Now we have a fancy looking verified check mark. Looks great. All right, so we have our user ready to go. Now down below, we might also want, let me actually just move this a little bit because we want to start the text post basically right below. So what we're going to do is instead of diving in here and just clicking, right? Because if we do that and we get to the end, just going to keep on going. We want to kind of set some boundaries. So we're going to click and drag to set our width. And now we can start typing out something like There we go. Now, for body copy, we probably don't want to stick with our bold weight. We want to do something like maybe medium or even potentially regular if your typeface supports that. In this case, it's called Roman on Astoria. I found it's a little bit too thin, so I think medium could work. And I'm also going to increase the line height just a little bit. I also think that verified badge is way too large. I'm gonna just dive in here and make this a little bit smaller. That could work. Perfect. All right, now, once we have our body copy, right? Can't, oh, thank you, Umicorn. There we go. What we want to do is, you know, on many of these social networks, they have actions. Uh, so we we might want um, a like button or an upvote. We might want uh, a comment, be able to save or also share as well. So this is where icons come back into play, right? And again, you can grab icons from your Icons for Design plugin or hop over to a third party icon manager. Maybe we'll grab this one over here, hop this in, line this up. And we'll do about maybe 18 for these icons. We don't want them too large. And then we also probably don't want them too bold. So I might want to just bring this up a touch somewhere in this range here. We'll see what that looks like. It might still need some tweaking. And then beside this, I'm going to dive in here. We're going to add in maybe 9,203 people were talking about me using Comic Sans too much, which is very likely, right? It is very possible. All right, that could potentially work. And then we're gonna want maybe a comment or chat, possibly. Message. I want something a little bit different than the message icon that we used. So let me check some of these other, it might be under chat. That one's not bad. Hmm. I don't know, or do we just use, the, uh, use something similar? I mean, this one's not terrible. I'm probably using the wrong term for some of these. Message, chat. I don't know. You know what? We'll just grab this one. Pop that in there. Make it a little bit smaller as well. How many people commented on this? Probably not as many. All right. 
and then we might want the option to save. Now this one, we're probably not gonna display an actual value. We probably don't need to see how many people have saved a post. So this one might be something like a bookmark. This one could potentially work. What icon manager is being used, Kevin is asking. This is, so the icon manager itself is called Nucleo. I think uh, uh, Wade will probably post a link in the chat to Nucleo. And the icons themselves that I'm using are not part of Nucleo. Nucleo does have their own icons. I, have, I haven't purchased them only because I have so many icons that I've purchased previously, but many of these icon sets were from UI8.net um, or just, you know, random icons that I have grabbed throughout the years. There we go. And then finally, say Struffy is asking, save a post. Is that a thing? It is a thing. So um, Instagram has a way. It's, I think Instagram calls it bookmarks possibly, but when you go to your actual uh, profile, it's under save. And then um, Reddit also has a similar ability where you can save a post for later viewing. Uh, I think Twitter also introduced uh, bookmarks recently as well. So it just allows you to kind of save something without liking it, which in some cases could be public. And then we might want share of some sort. Uh, I saw one. This one looks pretty good. I like that one. bit smaller as well. Let's go back to about 18. Let's grab this color again. Of course, if you have it in your document asset, which I do, um, you can just, you know, grab it from there. And this might be share. All right. Now, what I want to make sure to do is make sure that all of these are nicely evenly spaced. So I'm going to just drag this one over to the right to snap with the guide. I'm going to make sure this one is lined up with the text post and the username. Right? Something like that. And then I want to select all of these groups. And then right at the top right hand corner, I want to make sure to distribute horizontally. And I'll group these and call them actions. Perfect. All right. So we have our text post looking pretty good. But of course, you know, there's there are a lot of different types of posts that we might want to include inside of this application. Text is just one of them. We might want a photo post and a video post. So this is another opportunity to use components. So I'm gonna select all this information, command control K to turn it into a component. And I'm gonna call this, let's say feed slash um, item possibly. And that'll just make sure that it posts it in my components in a feed group and then item, right? This is great. So now I can go ahead and create a new state. Sean is asking, can you make the friends icon go into a carousel instead of just left and right? Friends icon. Oh, so if you're talking about, Sean, if you're talking about the stories at the top, it can make them into a carousel instead of carousel. Clarify what you mean by carousel. Um, do you mean just like click and then it kind of moves over and then click and it kind of moves over, that sort of thing? If that's the case, then it would be done with components and states. Um, this one up here at the top was done with the scroll group, which can go uh, freely, horizontally, or vertically, or in both directions. All right, so we have our new state, and this is gonna be our called our photo state. Now, to make our life a little bit easier, what we might wanna do is we may actually want to use stacks. So actually, back in the default state, so I apply it to everything, I'm gonna actually select the text post and also the actions, place that into a group, call this post, and then create another stack. This one's gonna go vertically, as you can see here, because it noticed that there are two objects and they are going vertically already, so it did define it as vertical. Now, if I go to photo, you're gonna notice we still have our stack because it pushed that to all the other states. And this will allow me to dive in here, grab our rectangle, and just pull this down, right? Maybe I'll round out the corners. Let's try eight. I'll change the color just for a moment, right? And I'll hop over to Finder and let's grab an image and, oops. Boop. There we go.
Perfect, so we have our default state and we have our photo state. And now we may also want a video state. So I'm gonna create one more new state. This will be called video. Now I wanna make sure to remove the photo before I add a video. I'm gonna hop over to, I have some videos here. I'll pop that in there. Videos work a little bit differently than photos. It actually creates an object mask inside of your layers panel. Now I probably, well, actually, I was gonna say, I probably don't want this video to play automatically, but in many social networks, they do play automatically as you're scrolling down the feed. So I'm actually going to switch this over to play automatically. And do we want it to loop? Depends, right? In this case, we probably do want it to loop, so I'm gonna go ahead and loop it. Kevin is asking if I have a component with hover overlay and stretch it to fit an image in the background, the font size changes and some of the elements stretch too. Can we give elements a fixed height? Yes, so in some cases you can actually dive in here. Let's actually select this object here. Is actually you have to edit the main component like, or default state. So if I dive in here over to the right, you wanna make sure that responsive resize is set to manual and you'll want to select fixed width and fixed height. So they will both be blue, which means they're active. And that way, when you do resize something, as long as you're not holding down shift, um, it should resize it and it will uh, you know, maintain its fixed width and height. Andres is asking, why remove the photo first? So because photos and videos work a little bit differently, um, if I were to have a photo like this one and try to drag a video into it, it's not gonna work because they're too they're kind of two different types of masks, so it just doesn't allow you to replace it, right? But if you replace the photo with a color, it essentially removes the photo from that mask, and that will allow you to then pop the video, right? A little bit confusing, but that's the deal. So if I do launch this, we have our video. I don't know what these things are called. What are these? Uh, I don't know, but they're desserts. They're pro there's probably a name for it. All right. So we have all of our different uh, uh, feeds. We have our default state, which is just text. We have photo, we have video. And now what we can do, we can actually take this one, place it into a group. I'll call this group, whoops. Uh, group. I'll call this group feed. There we go. I'll turn another stack on. Now, this time, again, because there's only one object inside of this group, it defined it as horizontal. We definitely don't want that. Because if I were to dive in here and duplicate, it's going to add another one over to the right. Not, not ideal, right? But we can just switch it over to vertical, and it automatically pops it down there. And we can adjust the spacing. Let's do about, let's try 24. And now we can dive in and we'll switch this over to photo. We'll duplicate another one. We'll switch this over to video maybe. And now we have a nice looking feed of content, right? We have our text, we have our photo, and we have our video. And because we have stacking enabled, if we did decide to change the content inside of this, so right in this middle one, if I want to make this photo larger, for example, you're going to notice as I did that, the one at the bottom, which is the video, automatically resized, which is great. Now I'm going to very quickly dive in here and just switch up the people a little bit. Let's add another person in here. And then down here, we'll add, let's see, more people over here, this guy. All right, let's get some names from the chat. I think we already used Stroofy. And let's see, who else do we have in here? Jesse. Lacey. Ten minutes ago, right? And then down here, let's say this is Wade. And we'll do about 20 seven minutes ago. Perfect. So if I go ahead and launch the preview, we're going to notice that we have our social media application looking pretty good. So we have our stories at the top, which we can scroll, and then we have our feed at the bottom. Now, at the moment, we cannot scroll 
through the feed, right? And there's two ways to be able to do this. We can either select the artboard and then drag down this handle at the bottom until we can see the rest of it. And it will reveal the viewport handle at the left. This will determine what's visible initially. So above the fold, essentially. And then what's visible upon scroll. So I can scroll down and I can see it. Or we can also use another scroll group. So if I select this feed here, I can turn on a scroll group. In this case, we'll want to do vertical, right? Now this will be a little bit, little bit difficult. It, you know, the experience will change because if I launch this and I scroll down, you're noticing the stories stay at the top. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't. In this case, you probably don't. So what I would probably do is just go with that artboard scrolling, scroll that down, and I'll be able to do that. Now, in some cases, the, the header actually stays at the top, right? So very quickly, in order to do that, what we might wanna do is actually make a rectangle in the back, maybe the same color as the artboard, select all this information, group it, I'll call this header, and then over within the properties inspector, fixed position when scrolling. So this will allow the stories to scroll also want to make sure that the header is on top in your layer stack. This will allow the stories and the feed to scroll, but the header at the top will remain in place. And just to get a bit fancy before we wrap up, I'm going to add a very slight background blur, zero for the brightness, so it looks basically like nothing, right? But if I scroll down, oh, yeah. Yeah. let's increase the effect opacity to like 85. I tried to get fancy and then it backfired. Ah, that's a bit better, right? Much better. And of course, if I had this much larger, oh, I'm about to get kicked off. Okay, goodbye, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.